Rachel McAnallen. She is Ms. Math, and we are very, very fortunate to have her teaching some of our online math courses. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Jordan. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. So we're just doing a virtual open house so parents and students can get an idea of what classes with you online look like. Can you give us a little bit of background about who you are and, and your teaching experience and why you're Ms. Math? Well, I've been teaching math to students of all ages for over 60 years, let's put it that way. And I've taught four-year-olds up to people my age. And uh, I've been a high school administrator. I've been a school board member and a general rabble rouser in education. Uh, I've traveled the world. I've taught math, the wonderful world of math to kids and, and adults on all the continents except Australia and Antarctica. And uh, if I get an invitation to go to Australia, I'll be like a flea on a dog. I'll be on an airplane ready to go. But no Antarctica. <laughs> well, no, if I get an opportunity to go there and see penguins, I'd really like that because I'm an avid birder. Besides loving math, I love birds. So that's what I've been doing with my life, enjoying the beautiful world of mathematics and attempting to pass that on to kids because they're our future and attempting to help adults who have math anxiety. And so who are you teaching at Royal Fireworks and what courses are you teaching? I'm teaching a course for uh, a, a, a math course for highly gifted elementary kids. And I think in the course, I have eight year olds up to 11 year olds and I'm doing math that they would never ever get in a traditional public school. Oh, I have a hair here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I teach other number bases. I teach them conversion from, let's say, base three to base 10 and base 10 back to base three or base five. Uh, we haven't hit base 16 yet, which means they have to make other symbols. Uh, I do a lot with geometry with them using a circular protractor and a ruler, which it's a ruler if we measure, but it's a straight edge if we're doing uh, designs. Um, I just do mathematical stuff that they get excited about. The um, last Monday's class was about fractions and we're using pattern blocks with fractions. And uh, oh, at the end of the class, the kids were cheering and laughing and saying I love fractions, which I do too. And it's usually fractions in public school that turn kids off because we don't teach it with manipulatives. And all my teaching is with hands-on stuff because if your hands are working, your brain is working. Coming semester, I'm doing that course again, part one. And then for the kids who've taken part one, I'm doing a part two. And in part two, we're going to be building mathematical models. We're going to be making stuff like this. Uh, this is an icosahedron made out of four circles. This is an icosahedron, an origami icosahedron. Ico is the Greek word for 20. This is, this is origami. This is a stellated icosahedron. Uh, takes 30 sheets of paper to fold. And the folding is easy. It's called modular origami or unit origami. You fold 30 pieces exactly the same way, but putting them together is the real puzzle. Uh, here's one of my favorites. This is an open framed dodecahedron, 12 faces. And that's also 30 pieces of paper, a little teensy paper. This is an origami, but these are triangles, which of course are very stable. And the design on them uh, is a design coming from the Fibonacci series. 
it's all straight lines. Your, your eye thinks you're seeing curves, but it's all done with straight lines. Oh, cube. This is made out of six circles. Fibonacci design on it also. So uh, we'll be this part two will be focusing a lot more on geometry, still doing a lot of number sense. Uh, I don't have kids memorize uh, memorize facts. I want them to think about this so that we think like a mathematician rather than memorizing stuff. And for their homework, uh, one of their homeworks was uh, they had to read a book and they had to write a letter to the to one of their favorite characters in the math book. Another homework assignment was to um, draw pictures of fractions. And I have one student in the class who loves to draw cartoon characters. So she loves the uh, any assignment that I have that, to draw. So I try to look at the child's strength. If they like to draw, their homework is mathematics and drawing. Um, they're just kids. <laughs> <laughs> so how does the class typically run when you, when a child signs onto your online class, can you give us just like a little walkthrough of what a normal day would look like? A normal class is they come in, we all say hello, I take, uh, I take attendance and then I tell them what they're going to do. Uh, when they sign up for the class, they have to buy a kit of materials, manipulatives. So I tell them what manipulatives we're going to use and uh, what math we're going to play with. Uh, with the pattern blocks, we do a fractional candy game. And we do if-then statements. If the little tri green triangle is one, then what's the blue rhombus equal to? And we go through it. Uh, I, uh, I'll make a design with several pieces of the pattern blocks and we'll say, that's one. Now go find the value of the other pieces, which I can drive high school math teachers berserk with that. Uh, and uh, which I've done and I enjoy doing. And the, the kids have fun with it. They're such free thinkers. They're not hemmed in by any procedures. So instead of teaching procedure procedures, I teach concepts. What's the concept behind this? And they're, they're so much fun. Uh, kids, are, uh, uh, kids are a joy to teach. Uh, I, on Mondays, I always look forward to Mondays because that's when I get to play math with them. And I never know what mathematical questions they're going to ask. And I might go into the class with a plan of what we're going to do and the homework. And the only people who are required to do the homework are the, the kids and parents who want grades. Uh, but most of them do the homework and then they send it to me uh, via email. But I go into the class with a plan of what I'm going to do and a plan in my head of what homework I'm going to give. But one of them may ask a mathematical question and then shoots the living daylights in my plans, which any teacher understands. The problem with public schools nowadays is that the teachers have to teach to a test and here's the plan and this is the plan I must do, and here's the curriculum I must follow, and heaven forbid that a child ask a mathematical question that's not in the plan. The joy is teaching these kids is that they ask a mathematical question that's not in my plan, and I can run with it, and then what that does is it spurs other kids to ask more mathematical questions, and it just blows a hole in my plans, but I've taught long enough and I know my math well enough that I can go and 
plan as we go along according to what they ask. So is there anything that comes up on a regular basis in terms of questions that parents have for you that you want to address right now so that anybody who might be interested in the class can figure out if it's right for their child? Um, uh, that's a good question in which it's hard to answer. Uh, sometimes parents, uh, they think they think they know what the child should have mathematically based on their mathematical experience, which may be limited, especially if they went to public school and, uh, and they don't understand where I'm going. Why am I teaching base three? Why am I teaching base five? Why would I teach base 16? Uh, because I want the child to become a mathematical thinker, not a procedural thinker. And many parents say, this isn't how I did it when I went to school. And I'll say, yay. <laughs> yay, let me, for example, when we all went to school and we had a three digit number, added to a three digit number, added to a three digit number, we were told you must add the ones first. You must. And we teach words like carry and regroup. Those are mathematical. Those are terms we never use in algebra. So we're taught we have to add the ones first. And if a kid in the class says, can I add the hundreds first? Of course, we say no. But yet we teach that four plus two is equal to two plus four. We teach that property because that's in the curriculum. And then if a kid wants to add the hundreds first, wants to add from the left instead of the right first, we say no. Well, we've undone that property then. But if you think about it, when we count money, you never count the pennies first. You go to the quarters. And if you're fortunate enough as a parent to have $100 bills, which you usually don't if you have children. <laughs> uh, so if you have, if you think about it, if you have a bunch of bills, you never go and pick up the ones first. You always work with the higher bills. So that when you add numbers, you should work with the higher numbers first. But you can't if you've been taught a procedure. And the same thing, we teach kids you can't take a bigger number from a smaller number, and we all run around in debt. And well, we teach kids that you can count forward as far as you can, but then we have them count backwards, we stop at zero. Little kids can understand that you can go zero, you know, five, four, three, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. I mean, if you live if you live in any northern state, you've certainly experienced life below zero. <laughs> so, yes, when parents say this isn't how I did it when I went to school, I say, OK, well, let me show you something different. Let's change your thinking a little bit. I really wish I had had the opportunity to learn math with you. I might have been a mathematician one day. Um, where can parents contact you if they have any questions before deciding to sign up with you? Is there an email address that you use? Um, I'd like, yes, there's an email address, but I'm so, I'm old and I like hearing a real live voice. So they're welcome to call me at 860. Notice I didn't say, oh, 860. 477-0060. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for taking this time to talk with our parents. And hopefully some of these lucky kids get a chance to take your class. Not only will they be lucky, but so will I. I'm always, always happy to play math with all ages. So thank you for contacting me. Take care, stay safe. <laughs>